AMD has made things pretty complicated this generation when it comes to their motherboards, but the manufacturers are making it that much easier. Like for example, what's the difference between the X870 Aorus Elite, which costs $290, and the X870e Aorus Elite, which will cost you $30 more. So come with me on a journey as we try to figure that out. And right off the bat, when it comes to the CPU power delivery and the overall overclocking capabilities of this motherboard, it is pretty much identical with the same 16 plus 2 2 plus 2 power phases rated at a maximum of 60 amps, the same two full 8 pins for CPU power, the same 6 layer PCB, and also the same maximum 8200 mega transfers per second memory overclock rating. Though of course that is still more than enough for most people, so okay, maybe the PCIe expansion is a bit different, after all, the additional PCIe lanes are what make this chipset stand out from x870. And while we still have the same primary PC Gen 5 16x slot, an additional Gen 4x4 slot below that, and below that we get another physical 16x but actually Gen 3x4 slot, while previously it was just two lanes, so that's an improvement I guess. And storage wise we once again get four other two slots, with three of them still being Gen 5 and one Gen 4, plus four SATA connectors. But when it comes to PC expansion, here's where things get complicated, just like with the X870. Here, once again, if you populate those middle two and the two slots, it will cut the bandwidth to your graphics card in half. However, unlike last time, populating that final M.2 slot will not disable that PCIe slot. So at least that's something, but you're still limited to just two NVMe drives before you start dropping those precious lanes to your graphics card. Now, I get it, that might sound like a huge problem, but as we covered previously on this channel, bandwidth isn't that big of an issue and it will not impact your performance pretty much at all. So it's not something you have to really worry about, even if it does sound crazy and dangerous and in a different world I'd probably make some super clickbaity thumbnail and title about that for this very video, but I'm a kind YouTuber and I won't do that. So yeah, those PCE changes probably won't affect too many people, so okay, maybe some of the other internal I.O. is different, but I mean you do get 6 fan connectors and on such a motherboard I would honestly prefer to see 8, except for, oh wait a second, the cheaper X870 does have 8, this one actually has less for some reason, but hey, at least it still does have the 3 addressable and 1 non-addressable RGB connectors as well. So okay. Maybe there's some changes in the rear I.O. to really make this worth the additional $30. And, oh, your enthusiasm and lack of cynicism is cute. Here, once again, it's exactly the same, but that's not technically a bad thing. You still get the very impressive 10 USB Type A ports, the one thing that Gigabyte has always done really, really well. And you still get two 40 gigabit per second USB Type C ports as well. HDMI for integrated graphics, though unfortunately no display port. 2.5 gig Ethernet, even though some players like MSI are including 5 gigabit this generation. You also get Wi Fi 7, and unfortunately, as is to be expected from Gigabyte, just two audio jacks and optical spidiff. Powered by the same ALC 1220 codec as the X870. So, has Gigabyte done anything then to justify charging you 13 more of your hard earned dollars for this motherboard, apart from just sprinkling in a couple of more PCIe lanes, which most people won't even care about, and taking away two of the fan connectors? Well, there is the aesthetic, and sure, the Extreme does look a lot nicer, so that's something. However, I don't think missing out on that will keep too many people up at night. But still, if those couple of tweaks really do mean a lot to you, then I guess you could go worse than this. And our new egg and Amazon links to it and other movable boards will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below. Where you're just going to find a Patreon, because even a single dollar month truly goes a long way. And for the month of December, if you are at least a $10 Patreon, you get a special one-of-a-kind Christmas card. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vronyak, Barlish Roker, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Maxim Nashin, Allcroft, and Level Up. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't remember, to subscribe, like whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good bye.